Hey everyone, my name is Pratik Naik. I'm an editorial commercial retoucher. For those of you who know me or don't know me, retouching efficiency is so important to me, which is why retouching toolkit I think is my best friend, just because of the fact that it offers so much in the way of efficiency and taking advantage of innovative tools that you can't get anywhere else. So say you're like me and you have a bunch of actions and presets and tools and scripts and brushes that you always access, but you wanna organize it in a way where it's customizable in a way that Photoshop doesn't let you do. That's what Retouching Toolkit basically is. Now, the other benefit of Retouching Toolkit is you can download add-ons in the future that allow you to take advantage of other tools that haven't been developed, like the color grading module, which is gonna come out in the future. Uh, you might even see it at the time of this video. But I think ultimately for me, um, I wanna just show you exactly how it works and I wanna show you my workflow. But ultimately, I also wanna show you um, some of the things that come with the toolkit by itself because it comes with a base module and a layout that Connie's developed for his workflow that already has a ton of really, really cool scripts and features that you can take advantage of in your workflow. So let's just jump into it. I wanna show you how it works. Now that we've jumped straight into Photoshop, here's a look at some of the new functions that the new retouching toolkit has. And first and foremost, obviously you have to download the retouching toolkit in order to get this palette into Photoshop, but it does also come with this amazing configurator here, which is what you're gonna be spending a lot of time with. And I've loaded up Connie's new workflow toolkit here. And as you can see on the left-hand side, here's one that I've made for my own little actions that I use on a regular basis. And what I really love about this is the fact that, you know, in the actions palette itself in Photoshop, let's go to it, let me just show you. You can see here that the actions palette is quite limiting. You know, you don't really have a lot of functionality, but with the toolkit itself, I can put actions next to each other in a row and then assign them for each button. So if you wanted to actually add or modify a button, you'd simply change it by clicking on it and then say like change the color. You can change what it does by going to like command. And I have all my actions that are loaded into Photoshop here. And for example, it has all these different functions here that I can normally save and apply to that button. But obviously this is not a tutorial on how to customize it. For that information, please check out the website at retouchingtoolkit.com. There's a ton of videos about that, but this video is specifically gonna be going over some of my new favorite features here with Connie's new workflow. So let's just jump back straight into Photoshop and I wanted to show you that just to give you some familiarity. Um, but the new retouching toolkit here is really cool. And this portrait here that I took of Joe Perleski is gonna be something that I'm really excited to work with because I've done some retouching on it, but there's some things that I really wanna do um, to take it further. The first thing here is gonna be unifying some of the skin tones a little bit more. And I have that on my retouching series where I talk about unifying skin tones and I use a gradient map for that. But if you wanna do it faster, the toolkit makes it super, super easy. And I'll show you exactly how it works. And the best thing about this toolkit is, let's say that I really like one of these functions that Connie has, I can easily go back to my configurator and then say like, add another little button here. Under elements, I can say add a button and I can change that and go to command and I can change, say, one of Connie's little presets here in the scripts. I can take it if I want to and just put it here and apply that. And here's um, the scripts as well. So there's a ton of different things that you could do and you can add um, different scripts, actions, as well as menu options. So Photoshop has different menu options you can put in there as well. So, you know, like if I wanna go to file, save, I can just click on file here at the bottom and then go to like save and that becomes the save button, you get the idea. So a ton of things you could do. But anyways, if you wanna borrow something from the new panel and make your own, you can totally do that. Uh, you can make your own little categories here. So it's really, really fun. But anyways, let me go back to it because I'm sidetracking. Um, if I wanna unify the skin tones, I use gradient maps for that because I can pick the color in the highlight, shadows, midtones, and then just let it decide exactly how to set it up. Because the setup part's the most annoying part. So I'm gonna click on gradient map maker. Let's say I'm gonna select a highlight, say okay. Select the midtone, okay, and select the shadow and say okay. That's it, I'm gonna hit cancel. Now it's set up for me. All I need to do is hit command I, go to my brush tool, and then with a 10% flow, I'm just gonna brush it in. And you can see what happened here is that the blue tones that were on the face, on the nose, kind of dissipated. I'm not gonna use it to its full opacity, but I'm gonna tone it down a bit. So it just 
comes in nice and natural. So I can use it to shift different color tones in areas where there's spill happening or you know there's just different tones across the face. And if I want to just bring them in subtly, I could do that and reduce the opacity. And the best part about it is it does a really, really good calculation on where each of those color points should be. If a color is too similar to each other, it'll just merge it together. You can also pick more than three points if you want to, but I pick three just because I'm used to that. And uh, yeah, it just makes a really, really nice um, setup here for me. So it's really, really convenient, really beautiful and easy to set up. So and it has a bunch of other features within the shell, um, such as a blending option. So it doesn't you know, tamper with some of the shadows and deep highlights that you don't really need to tamper with. So that's the first thing that I really liked about this. Another function that I really enjoy about the toolkit here is going to be the fact that if you ever use a spot healing brush, you know that you can either sample all layers or you can sample to the layer that you're on, but you don't have current and below. And with current and below, that allows you to work on blank layers like this, which the standard healing brush does let you do. As you can see here, the healing brush does let you do current below. But with the spot healing brush, it only lets you do sample all layers. And how do we get around that? Well, Connie has something really cool where if I duplicate the background layer temporarily, and let's just say that I get rid of this little hair over here, right? If I get rid of that hair here, and if I only want that brush stroke to be on a layer, I can come over to my document tab and here's a little script here that says delete identical pixels. I can click on that. And what it does is if you notice the layer itself went blank, but on the layer, it actually saved the contents of my spot healing brush. And that's really cool because it deleted all the pixels that were identical from the background and it kept all my work on this blank layer. So I can use a spot healing brush now on a duplicate of a background. And then when I'm done, I just hit delete identical pixels and it saves that information on the top layer. So it really makes my document smaller and I'm so happy about it because I've always wanted Adobe to put current and below on the spot healing brush and because they haven't, this is the next best solution. Okay, so the next thing that I'm excited to show you is gonna be the dodge and burn update. So the dodge and burn update is really cool because a problem with dodge and burn that we get we get all the time is if we're actually dodging and burning, uh, we get color shifts that happen sometimes uh, on some pictures. Like if you have areas where it might be too desaturated or oversaturated, once you're done dodging and burning, it's a pain in the butt because you gotta go in and actually fix the color shifts that happen. But with this method here, he has it set to a certain parameter that limits the actual saturation shifts that happen. And that's really, really wonderful because then you don't have to go and try to color correct anything. Um, and this is really great because it works in a variety of situations where there's a lot of saturation shifts that are already happening with the image and you don't want that mess and you know when that happens. So this is really cool. He's updated it to actually change the tonal curve here in a very, very precise way. I remember him telling me how many hours he spent on it getting it just right. And to be honest, only Connie has that kind of determination getting such a setting correct. So this is gonna be something that everybody can benefit from. And I know if you dodge and burn your work that I know that I do, um, you're gonna find this hugely beneficial. And the best part about it is you can actually push this quite far. Let me change my brush setting here. You can push it quite far and you won't get as many saturation shifts. This is also good for um, adding any specularity across part of the image. Obviously, I'm just overdoing it. I would never do this. <laughs> Sorry, Joe, but uh, you get the idea. It really keeps the colors um, quite pleasant, even if you're pushing it quite far. And normally you wouldn't expect to push um, luminosity this far, because even if you change it to luminosity, you still get a weird color shift that happens. And this, I think, is the ultimate for dodging and burning. I really, really am excited about it. So thank you so much for that, Connie. Um, I would say the next thing that I really enjoy about the updated toolkit is the eye help function. So the eye help function here has all the possible um, helper layers. So in case you do want your luminosity helper layer, which is there, your saturation helper layer, which is there. This for me is so key because this tells me the areas that have more saturation than other, others. So for example, on the left side of the face, there's more saturation 
um, than say the right side which is pretty identical to what I'm seeing visually. But this helps because sometimes you don't know whether an area is oversaturated or desaturated, and this can help. Um, another function here is a hue, which shows me like the bridge of the nose. I'm not really sure what like that hue is, that color. So I can click on hue and I know immediately like, oh, that's actually a blue tone. So if I wanna correct that and make it more, you know, of, uh, of like this area here, I can sample that, paint underneath which I can do right now. I'm gonna select hue. And let's see if that works. And let's say sample like over here and see. So I'm brushing underneath and because I sampled in a specific location, it really does come into play. And just like that, I've you know corrected that blue tone in a way that would actually match, but the difference of saturation is still there. I would bring that back and uh, there we go. So you can see it's gone from more of a blue tinge to more of a skin tone just because I use this helper layer. So that helper layer is really, really cool. And then you have all kinds of other things like um, negative, which inverts, good for seeing dust spots. The solar curve is also really, really good for seeing dust spots in the background. I love using that a lot. This is also something you can tell when you wanna see if you have any healing brush marks that um, are stray healing brush marks. And you're like, oh no, I overdid it. That's a really good one. So that's really cool. Aside from that, there's a ton of other things that I like. One of them is gonna be the, let's see, the document and resize a long edge. So sometimes I resize um, images a different setting. So Instagram, I'll do 1080, cause that's what it seems to like. So I'll do 1080, um, I'll give it a quick little sharpen and then I'll save that and then I'll click on X. I'll say don't save and then I'll do one that says, uh, you know, like 2000 if I want to or 2048 and then I can easily just output those different parameters. I love using that a lot personally because it gives me that really nice manual control. And I know there's many other ways to export to the web, which, you know, the toolkit also does have, which is really, really nice. But um, I like using that a lot. And there's a ton of other things that the toolkit has that you know you could spend all day going over. But as I mentioned before, I'd really encourage you to check out retouchingtoolkit.com. It's gonna be something really incredible, especially with some of the new tools that are coming out. And also join the group. The Retouching Toolkit group on Facebook is where you can also see a ton of videos, um, live videos with, with um, Connie and Stefan and myself and just everyone who wants to share uh, what they've come up with. And also I'm excited to see some of the other panels that people create. And as I mentioned before, you know, I've created my own little thing here. It's just nice and compact because I'm a little hoarder of, of buttons in a confined area. And I'm gonna be taking some of these functions here and adding it to mine and uh, expanding that. So it's really cool to see what people are up to and what they're doing. So hope you enjoy this video and I'm so excited to see what you do with the retouching toolkit.